so welcome back to another episode of the Providers Playbook. I forgot the name. Today we are welcoming the amazing Suzanne uh, from Clear Path Accounting. Um, she is an award-winning account. Oh, sorry, she has an award-winning accounting firm in Blacksland. For those that don't know Blackland, Black Blacksland. It is at the foot of the mountains, the Blue Mountains. Just a hop, skip and a jump away from Penrith. Yes, and you quite like just being that little bit away I from... I do. It's quicker to get up to the hill in my in my office with a glass of champagne or a beer than <laughs> trying to find a park here in Penrith. <laughs> Absolutely. She has over 25 years of accounting experience, um, is a dedicated mentor who is on a mission to transform lives and empower business owners to achieve success. Um, she is an absolute powerhouse in that space, um, a confidence queen, I would say, and <laughs> she's, she's uh, I, I've done a lot of work with her myself. She considers herself to have a friendly and vibrant personality. I, totally I would have <laughs> used completely different fucking words, but anyway, what, let's what roll would with you. <laughs> <laughs> let's roll with friendly and vibrant. Um, <laughs> And she makes learning about business enjoyable and believes that understanding your numbers is the key to true success. She loves working with NDIS providers as long as you're as amazing as me. Um, So get ready to get inspired. Um, And she definitely has the ability to make numbers fun, very unscary. So I can't wait to have her on today so welcome thank you rachel that was all right that was i think i nailed that intro <laughs> i disagree but i, I, I think <laughs> that, <laughs> that was like blah, 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 blah. Yeah, 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 but um I, I think something that i want to start with um i guess we'll we'll jump into it but We're not before play a game we first. are we okay. are but just because i'm following on from the intro oh okay um, making numbers interesting um how? how how do we how do we make what what's the interesting part about numbers well, uh, for me, I, I actually take it on as a bit of a challenge. So um, as soon as you know your numbers, number one, you've got something to measure yourself against. So then you've got this chase, you know, uh, it creates a, yeah. a desire to beat it. Yeah. Um, and then the decisions come really, really easy. For, and quickly. For, and quickly. You mm. don't have to, oh, what, what effect will that have? I don't really know what that's going to do. I'll kind of do it anyway. <laughs> as soon as you got, you know your numbers, you know your stats, you've just got this confidence about you that it's like, yeah. Okay. Just before we jump, sorry, just I, I want to follow on that. Something that I always talk about with a lot of my friends when they're starting businesses and stuff and they go, oh, you know, that's so much. Like they'll talk about five grand, ten grand or something and I go, Absolutely. Personally, that is a lot of money. But as a business, it's not. Like, I can make a five, ten thousand dollars decision like that, no problem when it comes to my business. But there's no way I'm going to justify paying seven dollars for a pie at the servo because that's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I, 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 I think when people make and that disconnect, they terrible. Can, yeah, <laughs> th- then people can start to make um, more objective decisions with mm. their, their business and then leave the, the subjective well, value I mean, stuff. For me, it's like as soon as you go into business, because don't forget. I too am in business, yes. so you know. I think my lear- biggest learning curve was when I um, opened a Clear Path Accounting up, um, I guess over seven years ago. Um, but yeah, there's a quantum leap there, isn't there? So you're suddenly, you know, transferring three and a half thousand dollars, and then it's seven and a half thousand, and then it's thirteen thousand, then it becomes twenty five thousand, and then it just grows bigger and bigger. Mm. So the feeling that you get when you first transfer, like, oh, a thousand. $1,200 in business is still a little bit sick. You feel mm. a little bit <laughs> sick at the beginning, but then it just starts to really grow. Mm. And so it's, yeah, it's all, um, you know, relevant. You know, the more money you earn, the more you're going to spend, the more you need to, you know, invest in the business, invest in people uh, to help you in the business. But, um, yeah, it's just this bizarre feeling that you've never been, it's never been so easy mm. to transfer that money out of mm. a bank account. And it's at first really scary just get used to that yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right let's jump into uh, a game to to warm up and go our games host i'm Ooh. the games host right okay so <coughs> thanks for ruining my routine anyway but i'll i'm all right i'm flexible so i'll work with it <laughs> oh, <just laughs> good a, girl out, thank out, you <laughs> out of sync yeah an, an amazing coach taught me that yeah trying to trip you up <laughs> that a dirty w- yeah you are <laughs> Nice try. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. You. Here's a game. I'm going to ask for you to tell us two truths and one lie, and we're going to guess what the truth is. Oh, okay. 
about anything in particular. Anything. Tell us two truths and oh, sorry, one truth and oh, two no, lies. No, it's two truths and a lie, and you got to guess what the lie is. Oh God, is it my game or yours? No, I'm telling you what the <laughs> game is. It's a pretty. It's you haven't invented this game. Tell it's been around t- for a long okay, time. You're right. Okay, you're right. I'm wrong. Okay, two truths and one lie. Two truths. Um, Don't do them in order. <laughs> no, <laughs> I won't. I'm, <laughs> I'm just trying to think of a of a, of a thing. Do you want me to start? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've had a nose job. Uh, my natural colour is blonde. And I'm wearing underwear today. <laughs> well, I know what the lie is. Yeah. That what? you're normally blonde. <laughs> yeah. Because your eyebrows are dark. Actually, you're wrong. My natural colour is blonde. But oh, so have you not had a nose job? Not had a nose job. Oh. I am wearing underwear today. Well, that was obviously a truth, but yeah. Well, who knows? <laughs> um, All right, your let me turn. Just see. Oh, this is harder than I thought. <laughs> I wasn't. I thought you were just going to ask me some questions. Like, um, <laughs> you got this. Um, my favorite drink is gin and tonic. My hair is actually permed and there's two sets of twins in my family. Oh, how, the, how are we going to guess that? Um, all right. Um, so gin and tonic, two sets of twins and your hair is permed. Okay, so I, I, I think the, the, the last one is true. I'm, it's the gin and tonic because I was like, you mentioned beer and... T- um, champagne before, so maybe maybe gin and tonic is a lie. Um, I don't know. That's my guess. <laughs> I'm gonna go gin and tonic too. <laughs> I accidentally lied twice. Is that <laughs> 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 so it was a bit confusing. Actually. Yeah, which one's the <laughs> that the was truth. a shit game. Hey. <laughs> which one's the truth? Hey, you know what? Next time you come up with a game, it was, it, yeah. was too, it was too tricky Wh- to be put on the spot. Which one was actually with. the truth? <laughs> I don't think we should scrap it. Two truths. The, the, okay, the two, <laughs> two twins. Truth. Two twins is the truth. Two twins is the truth. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> My favourite drink is Christian. champagne. <laughs> I knew that. The only accountant's office that you walk into that has a bar fridge in her office. Yeah. Stocked with Molly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so do you want to have a try? Because you're so good at the game? or you're just I'm, No, I'm not. Move on. No, okay. no, let's right. move on to the next one. I All can't right. think of two truths and a lie. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I have to pres- bring myself <laughs> back into the room. <laughs> okay, would you rather be the funniest person or the smartest person in the room? Oh, def- oh gosh, <laughs> yes. I love being really funny, but um, the smartest person in the room, I don't know why, I think it's a power thing. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. What about you, Chris? Funniest. I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I'm in the wrong room then. Well, that's obvious. <laughs> 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 How yeah. did I see that one come in? <laughs> I would, Walked I, into I would, that. <laughs> I would go humour too, um, just because I think that's more personable. Yeah, I think you need it too because you're not very funny. I've seen that Aww. coming. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Suzanne. Thank you. All we right. have a wild time, actually. We do have a much. wild time, yes. Um, your favourite – I know you're an avid book reader or audio book listener, so what's your favourite book and why? I actually really love um, – well, the first don't book I mine. ever read <laughs> was actually – well, I'm just going to say business book because I don't read um, – oh, I don't read fiction or anything mm. like that. Mm. I don't have time for that. Um, so the first book I ever read was The E-Myth and I just think, wow, that just changed the way I thought about business altogether. I'd been an accountant for 17 years helping small businesses and as soon as I read that book, I thought, my goodness. It's the perfect recipe. So it, he talks about, you know, um, uh, it's, it's by Michael Berber, um, and he talks about, you know, the perfect business model that is scalable without you working in the business. Mm. Mm. E-myth. So E-myth but revisited. What is the so it's McDonald's, believe it or not, is the ideal business model. Mm. That is it because they can get 14-year-olds to come in <laughs> and make the exactly the same hamburger Modern in... Labor. Any place mm. in the entire world. Mm. Very, very good. Um, a really great um, 
book that I recently read was 10x is easier oh. than 2x. Yeah, you told me to read that one. Mm. Oh, you already done it. Yeah. <coughs> you already did 10x. Yeah, no, but I'd like to see what a book would suggest. By, by Dan Sullivan and um, Dr. Benjamin Hardy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chris, favourite book? Uh, the Maverick Approach. Okay, what's that about? That's by the NDIS Ninja. Oh, which is him. <laughs> <laughs> plug, plug, didn't plug, know. plug, 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 um, plug. Uh, Unprofessional by Jack DeLosa. Okay, what's that about? Um, very similar to sort of what you were um, saying with the e It's sort of just with growing and scaling your business, but it's also about um, showing up and being, being you and leading with purpose and stuff like that. Um, there's something really interesting that he was sort of one of my first mentors when I started a business eight years ago. He's gone on to... He owns his own island and stuff now, hangs out with Richard Branson, so he's done really, really oh, well. Good on him. Um, he's, uh, um, owns the Entourage. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, so um, – but his um, book is, is really good and there's something that he says that, you know, the world can't um, work on love, trust and pixie dust and stuff and basically he says, like, there's nothing that says that you can't do the right thing and be incredibly successful but – you need to, exactly like you're about to say, you need to know your numbers because, yes, we're all purpose-led and dedicated to helping people, but the more money we get in, the more we're able to make change and start mm. to do a lot of, like, so if you want to start taking on um, participants that have run out of funding and still help them and do the right thing, you can't do that unless there is money there. So it is important to to know that um, so you can continue your purpose. But um, yeah, it's about really being purpose led and and that. But um, otherwise, yeah, the Maverick approach. Yeah, that that's that's epic. <laughs> Very good. What about you? Um, <coughs> how to win Flint? Oh God, I just need to just get out of this podcast today. Um, how to win friends and influence people. Okay, it's a really classic good book. Classic book. Um, it has a ten principles of you know just being a good person I think um and I have them plastered in my office now and from and I love the barefoot investor mm. I love that don't uh, 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 <laughs> it's my book time it's my book time but I the thing that I loved about that is that he simplified you know teaching people about how to manage money how to invest you know he didn't with every other f- don't roll your eyes Do you, you know you are on camera but um, I think because it does ex- um, – it removes the jargon. And I think that's something that you're so incredibly good at, Suzanne, is like when you're talking about numbers, particularly for someone who started in disability, who loves – is passionate about serving others and, you know, providing good dis- disability services, you know, th- they've never done their books or accounting or whatever. And then, you know, it's similar how we start talking in acronyms and stuff, like removing all that jargon and just simplifying it. Like I sit in Suzanne's office and she draws me pictures. Mm. All the time. Like this is the trust. (laughs) (laughs) This is who, you know. So I think that um, that that's what I like about that book. Okay. It's a good step one. Well, it's a process. Yeah. Isn't it? It it is complete process written for you. Here's the recipe. Now go and do it. It's easy. The easy is right. Yes, true. Um, what's the weirdest thing you've ever done? The weirdest. <laughs> this well, is a I'm question that can't I'm be pretty asked. <laughs> We're not going. We have to. Yeah, we have look, to I'm a pretty skip. conservative type of girl. I <laughs> haven't been too wild in my life because I was a mother at nineteen. But um, the weirdest thing. No, next question. <laughs> Nothing really. Nothing. It is a weird question, actually. What I can't think of that was weird. I've done. I can't either. think of anything appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure you've got plenty of stories, Chris. All right. Well, None. look, that's that's all the questions I really had. It was a bit of a flop today, but anyways, <laughs> <laughs> it got, <laughs> you know, it got us all laughing. I so. wish I could say I had I've done this really, really weird thing. That'd be great. Maybe that's on my to do list. <laughs> it would have been. It would have been good. <laughs> What's time. the weirdest thing you've ever no, done? No, I just said I just like, like a we- like when I actually read the question back to myself, it's a pretty weird question <laughs> 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 because it's like you don't often do really weird things, do you? Or admit them yes. to an yeah, audience of right. people. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, you need to, that you need to continue yeah. working with. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so let's move on to Suzanne and all about Clear Path Accounting and all the other cool stuff that you do. So, do you want to tell us a little bit about? Suzanne, your story first. 
Yeah, well, um, I started Clear Path Accounting just over eight years ago. Yeah. Um, and I, like everyone else, I had this brain freeze moment that says, you know what, I can do this better. So um, I, I did work for a traditional firm back then, um, but he gave me a lot of opportunity and um, I worked for my previous boss for 17 years and I decided, right, that's it, let's go. Uh, I waited till my youngest had finished school because I didn't want to um, jeopardise the financial position of the family. Uh, and then uh, we started um, on the 4th of January 2015. Uh, it grew pretty pretty quickly. We've been operating just over seven years. I now have a team of 11 plus an offshore team. Um, and I just love the challenge of not only being in business for myself, I absolutely love that challenge for myself. I think it's a real... Uh, being in business is a real tool for personal growth. You're never going to self-reflect more than than you having a business. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, my team are amazing. They support me a hundred percent. They never question. They're um, they're just they whatever I suggest, they just go for it. Um, and I love the the community that we've built. Really, our clients are just gorgeous. Um, we're pretty fussy on who we take on. Um, we, we do have a screening process because we invest so much energy to each and every client. So we want it the, we want the right ones. We want to work with the right people um, because um, I, we spend so much time with them. So it's not just the, the old tax and accounting. Yes, of course we do that. Yeah. Uh, and we can actually learn a lot from a business using that tool, um, but that's not the only thing that we do. So we're doing advisory. We want to meet our clients really monthly is ideal uh, because that's the we find the more you meet with a client um, then they're able to scale the business a lot quicker mm. a lot quicker and I'm not letting you get away with just that there's so much more to you than clear path accounting <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice try though so we've, we're also a business coach yeah business coach I, I we've got a team of business advisors um, uh, we do business coaching we also um, launched uh, the Millionaire Mindset concept, which I is saw great. that. Mm. It looked so, so cool. I'm, I'm away with the retreat because otherwise I was going to sign up. And I was talking to my mate Danny yesterday. He runs a big plumbing business and I was, yeah. I was showing it to him. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely keen to get in. Tell us a bit about it. Mm. Well, um, it basically started um, th- uh, two things. Um, so I have a business coach as well. I really, really believe that is the key to my success. Uh, because I need someone who makes me accountable for the changes at Clear Path Accounting as well. So you get lost in the in the doing all the time, and, mm. and sometimes the direction is not that clear. Mm. So I need someone to keep me on track. And Chris Borrett from Big Leap is absolutely amazing. Oh, if we had time to share your story about him, but anyway, that's, <laughs> that's for podcast two point oh. So um, yeah, there was two things that sparked um, the first um, Millionaire Mindset. Um, program was really for women so millionaire mindset for business and women uh, sorry women in business um, and there was two things that sparked it number one um, I read a poem which was just gorgeous and there was one part that says there comes a time in the life of a woman when she learned no longer plays small so others can feel big mm-hmm. Fuck yeah so and I think um, and the other second thing was According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, yes, back in 2018, but still a statistic, less than 4% of women in business reach the million-dollar revenue mark. Wow. 4%. Revenue? Revenue. I don't know how you could run a business on... Well, it depends. Revenue. Mm. And so those two things together, and I think one of the reasons is that we... That we... That we put so much time and energy into everybody else. Yeah. Or especially if you're a mum, mm. right? You you are looking after everyone, and your needs and your wants really are delayed significantly. And so we're always like, oh, it's okay. I'll just do this on the side, or I'll do it as a little hobby. But what if? What if we can empower more and more women to be, you know, their own boss, make the money that they want to do, hire the people you know, um, truly help more people in the community. The more money that you make, the more choices that you've got, the more freedom you have yep. and the more impact that you're able to have in the community. So that's what started the... the Can mind. I just scream? I just want to be like, yes, I yes, know. yes. <laughs> so we had, um, we, lo- we just launched it. We just built the program. It just came together really, really easy. And I thought, well, this is meant to happen. And then I we just put it out. And of course, well, obviously 
Rachel um, was part of the OG group. Yo, yo. Oh. Um, and we were able, so it's, it was a, um, a nine-week course um, and uh, you met every Tuesday, yes, face-to-face. Mm-hmm. The energy is really, really important to get mm. that momentum. Um, and the community that was built was oh. just beautiful. So how many people do you have in it? We had seven in the first and eight in the second. Okay. Right? So, um, and out of those seven, on average, so we found $2.5 million in profit improvement yep. from those seven original... In profit improvement. Profit yeah. improvement. Just by making that's a small two, two point tweak. When, when only 4% make a million revenue. Yes. So that's a huge difference. Yes. Now, obviously, you know, um, you know, there was a bigger business in there and then yep. a small one. So, but, but average... Three hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars in profit. In profit improvement on average, just by oh, making crazy. small tweaks in your bu- in your current business. Yeah. So that ah, was yeah. yeah. See, I was there. I listened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But that you've got an interesting guarantee with it as well. I saw on the website. Oh, you love a guarantee. Oh, well, that <laughs> makes that makes you stand out. A guarantee. Yeah. So if you don't find your money, you know, st- basically straight up, we'll coach you for free until you do. Yeah. You know, so I uh, we. Chris and I understand that it's really, really important when someone's making the investment, we need to find that straight away. Mm. We don't want them – we need to minimise the risk or reverse the risk mm. for, yep. for those um, candidates. We, we've yeah. got – and it, it's so important. We've just done that. So with this new program thing that, that we're launching, um, we've got a guarantee on it that we guarantee we'll add 250 grand to your revenue. Um, and if we don't, we'll give you your money back. Um, yeah, because so we w- like I went through it and I was like actually like I know for our fa- like hands down hundred and f- we can guarantee that no problem so why would we not mm. and then it gives everyone the confidence to know these guys know what they're doing I urge you to go to any other marketing agency or growth specialist in this sector and say can you guarantee you're going to make me 250 grand more and you know the answer is um, you know when it comes to, to their marketing they no one can it's a surefire sale technique mm. isn't Really, but a lot of business owners don't do it. Mm. Like, what can they guarantee? Mm. You know, even is there anything tangible? E- even mm. as an accountant, like I, I legally can't guarantee that you're going to get all your tax back and you're never yeah. going <laughs> to pay any tax. You know, because it's not legal, really. Yeah. But what can I guarantee? Yeah. You know, um, yeah. So, and then the second group, we also found two point five million dollars in profit improvement, two point four thousand uh, a million in cash flow improvement. So, and then, you know, each, we meet with each of the businesses personally, right? So they have a, a session, um, a private session each with Chris and I, and we go through the seven levers of the business and go, where in your particular business, what's the quickest way to make you more profit? Mm. Interesting. So, and then here it is. Here's a recipe mm. for it. And you did it with men too, not just women. Well, we're launching that. So we did have a few. I had a few comments like, "Well, what about the men?" And uh, we've decided to what launch about it. You? Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. I've decided I'm to so launch it. I'm so sick of being left out and not <laughs> being given equal opportunities. <laughs> yeah. I am so done with it. <laughs> yeah, so we thought, well, let's go, boys. Yeah. Let's see what we can achieve if here. Yeah, if I wasn't away, uh, if uh, you're yeah. away too, but if I wasn't away, then um, yeah. I, I was, I was in. So. Yeah. Are you yeah. doing another one? Possibly, okay. yeah. So we, we, we decide after each group and go, well, you know, um, we want the energy returned to us. Mm. You know, it's got to be a give and take. Mm. Yeah. Um, and we've really, really loved both both the women groups. So now it's the boys' turn. It's my turn to get in front of the men. Chris <laughs> <laughs> so had his women. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And also you um, sit on the board for the chambers you do yeah. a lot of work with the chamber of commerce in Penrith. Yeah, i you believe with their accountant didn't you and you're like well i did so um i joined the chamber four years ago mm-hmm. um and i thought what is even the chamber of commerce even it sounds like a little bunch of old men it's cute isn't it oh well <laughs> let's just go and see so i just turned up to an event um and i really loved it i felt very welcome and i thought there's going to be ten thousand accountants there mm-hmm. all standing in the same room mm-hmm. but there's enough work for all of us don't mm-hmm. worry um, so and I loved it, and I thought, um, and then I was invited to join the board as treasurer, and I thought, oh, I don't know about that. Mm. And then I realised who was going to be on the board, and I thought, yes, I can learn from mm. this. I was, you know, I'm a I'm a constant learner. What can I learn from every person that I that I meet? So um, I knew I could learn a lot from the board, 
And so I said yes, and then, yeah, now I'm vice president. Mm. Mm. Taking it over. Oh, but just, yeah, the yeah. vibe is definitely better than, you know. Yeah, I just love yeah. it. So, yeah. um, and and it's it pushes people outside their comfort zone. When you walk into a crowded room and there's, you know, 50 people there and you're like, oh, I've got to start talking about me and my business, that's hard for people. Do they love networking? Make a, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> nice, nice try. I love yeah. it. And it's been the connections that I've made in the chamber, yep. life Hundred yep. percent, completely agree. One of the people, so um, I actually started as our client, and then we joined up. So uh, he was the president of the Parramatta Chamber, president or vice president, um, vice president. Um, so we went, we started doing his marketing, and then we joined up to the chamber quite quickly. He's always on the chamber cell, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, he's become so much a part of my life. He actually gave a, a speech at my thirtieth. Wow, um, that's Isn't how, lovely. Yeah, that's how involve. Um, that yeah. those networks, how strong relationships you can build yeah. through the chamber. So I, I encourage, I invite people to join their local chamber. I think it should be a standard process when you when you mm. create a business to just get yourself out there. We hold, um, you know, the chamber collective groups as well. So we've got these groups of 15 business owners. We meet once a fortnight. Oh, we the have NRG a type. Uh, Paramount kind of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. Nice. Yeah. But um, yeah, the our, our group's really good fun. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, haven't been, I haven't had time to go to mine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you need to make time. Oh, it's 10 a.m. on a Tuesday. <laughs> oh, 10 a.m. I was at 7.30 in the morning. Yeah, that's what I'm, no, that's what I'm saying, 10 a.m. Oh, hard. it's too hard. It's yeah, we day. love it. I love yeah. the morning breakfast. And also, f- like, every second Thursday, you, I walk into that office and everyone feels my energy. I am fired up, Yeah, aren't we? Because we're just like... Yeah, just we have so much fun. We have so much fun, so... All right, let's let's give some value add to our to our um, listening audience mm-hmm. who Yep, continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you go. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Good one. Interesting. This is um, so I'm going to w- what I'll start with is so in our sector, right? Typically, if we're doing core support, um, you're paying your support worker 40 bucks an hour billing them out at 60, right? Um, now if you're a plumber, you're paying your apprentice 20 bucks an hour and billing them out at 120. So there's a lot more margin there. And our everything in our sector is a lot more administrative heavy than like a plumbing business, for example. So you've got a lot more unbillable work. So it can be profitable and great for a very small provider or a, a larger provider at scale. But getting through those teething, you know, as a medium-sized provider can be incredibly hard. So I guess what are the biggest financial challenges that providers face and how do they scale through that we call it the teenage years. Um, um, oh, that's you a know, good analogy. Pro- yeah, that's yeah. what, yeah. Um, how do they, they get through that, especially when uh, it, people think that the NDIS is just truckload of cash, but the mm. margins are, mm. are not, mm. like, um, compared to any other industry. Like, if you want, yeah. What, what's your advice there? What are the biggest Look, challenges and how do they overcome them? The biggest them? challenge for NDIS providers is simply the, the, um, uh, the business model. Right, and that's set by the government. Mm. So you know, if you've got support workers, you get um, a certain amount per seventy percent of every dollar that comes in the door goes directly to labour. Yeah, seventy percent. That leaves you with thirty percent. Number one to cover overheads and make a profit. Mm. And yeah. can, can what about that? Too? <laughs> and your, your what about overheads that? are yeah. very intensive too in this uh, sector yeah, as well yeah, with compliance. Yeah. Like yeah. audit is compliance training. Yeah, audits you know, ten grand every eighteen months straight away. Yeah. So you know you could have a business even when you're small. You know you're not. It's not a lot of money, right? You've got to make. You know the scalability is really important for an NDIS business. Volume. Volume mm. is really important. But even then, it can't be out of control. Mm. Mm. So if you start saying, well, I've got so many participants, I need to start paying, and not enough staff, I've got to pay overtime, there goes all of the 30%. Mm. Your profit is gone, mm. and then some. Yeah. Right, so you've got to be really, really smart on your rostering. Um, you know, if you can get some, you know, private, um, uh, what do they call it? Contractors? Rachel, um, no, but uh, you know how the um, NDIS, uh, the participants get private you can sell privately. It's not through NDIS. Right. You, oh, cho- you like can choose <coughs> your, your pricing a little bit. Yeah, so try and find ways that you can send outside of the NDIS price guide. That's right. right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So stretching that where, wherever you can, which is obviously ethical. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, with your housing providers, you know, you, you've got to be um, 
effective in your strategies on uh, which pers- participants are in which housing mm-hmm. and create economies of scale. Mm. Obviously, you, you, when you're hiring a, a premises, you want the ideal number of participants in that property pretty much as quickly as you can. Yeah, this is something that, that Joel spoke about at mm. the last retreat is um, exactly what you're saying. Like you almost want the participants there before you go and choose, um, go and find a house um, because otherwise it's going to sit vacant for six months. The process of getting a sealed participant on is a three to four month process. Anyone that tells yeah. you it's quicker than that yeah. is full of shit and don't work. So managing your pipeline, really important, yep. you know. Um, this there, you, you know, you've got such a restrictive model. I actually, I you know, if the, if there was no government involvement i'd be like choose your pricing or package it up you Mm -hmm. know to your participants so that you're not always relying on the per hour model because there's only a certain amount of hours in the day yes Yes, you can get more people but it's always a certain amount of hours of the day it's and and it it's a a sector where people do think it's just this truckload of cash and it's not Mm -hmm. and the thing is that when you're um trying to you're in this sector to make a difference which a lot of people do you need to understand that it needs to be profitable so that you can scale. Um, and that's why I'm not a provider is because if I can Because you're smart. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's because if I can help... If I start a provider today in, in two years, I could be at 500 participants. Yeah. But, but that's the... Th- there's not much more I can do. Whereas if I can help 100 providers do that, then we're changing 50,000 lives. And that's mm. for the... Exactly like you said, the economy of scale to affect Impact, change... Yeah. At, at, at scale, that's the way that, that we do it. And I think yeah. that's what, what people need to understand about the better you get your numbers, the more lives you can change, which is if you're a shit person, don't listen to this because we don't want to help you do that. But mm. if you're a good provider that wants to make that impact um, and can do, then it's so important to make sure the, that you are scalable and can. So someone that's a shitty provider down the road isn't. Well, someone, uh, I had a client once ask me, why Why do you help us so much, Suzanne? Why are you so invested? And I said, this business is bigger than you. Mm. Yep. This is bigger than you. This is not just about profit for you. Yes, that's, uh, you know, hopefully you can build this business model that makes enough profit so you feel happy and it gives you more freedom or whatever, but it's bigger than you. It, you've got, you know, um, 50 to 100 staff members and then they're touching a whole heap of people out in the community mm. and you're servicing the most vulnerable people of our community. Mm. Yep. So that's why I love helping, you know, uh, NDIS providers because I think, yeah, they've, they've got a lot of responsibilities on their shoulders. Mm. Yep. But th- you can change lives. Mm. You can change lives. Yep. Simple as that. Absolutely. Cool. Um, I feel okay. like there just needs to be a long pause there. <laughs> you can change lives, exclamation mark. Yeah, so that that sent you somewhere thinking, actually, mm. when you said that. Mm. Mm. Well, where did that send you? Pretty <laughs> deep. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, well, that's what I do. That's yeah, why 100%, I do. A hundred percent. And it, I suppose as an NDIS provider, it's really frustrating where, you know, the mainstream media and market and people that you speak to do think that it's just this truckload of cash and that everybody's getting in and we're just, you know, it's this get rich quick scheme or something like that because actually if you're running a really good ethical service where you have you know quality staff that are skilled and trained and you know you're running it with the right people in the business and everything else and you're providing really high quality service there's actually nothing in it well there's Mm. very small amount Mm. so we actually stretch to try and find the the ways that we can do business we're probably you know if, if we're if we end up making money we're actually pretty smart business people because we have to find all those efficiencies and we have to you know ensure that our um, our staff are not you know rostering overtime and all those kinds of things um rather than and also rather than using the increase your price strategy yeah yeah Mm. and you know and charging for everything that you do like you know you've got a real challenge that the funding can expire right or run out Mm. So you've got to be in charge, you know, th- you should know, every per- every NDIS business should know when the um, the funding is about to expire three in, from three months from now for every participant. So you've got to have a strategy for that. Mm. You, you should have a process in your business reported weekly or fortnightly to some type of manager to say, these people are going to expire in three months. What do we need to do now to ensure, especially when you're housing them, you can't kick people out on the street because their funding's expired. Mm. And then so what happens is 
oh, the funding expired, or whoops, or well, hang on, well, we'll deal with that. In the meantime, you're covering, you're, you're continuing your service. Yeah, if it's 24-7, you're spending over 10 grand a week in to cover that. <sighs> and that makes it really, really difficult. And so, and then you might get a bit of a challenge from NDIS and say, well, no, it should have been done earlier or they might have challenged you. You yep. can't have it. So the write-offs in, um, you know, or bad debt that we call it uh, in, in an NDIS business can also be really dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. I, I work with a lot of providers that have 200 grand plus in, in backlogged invoices that they just yeah. are going to have to write off. Yeah. And that yeah. is a lot of, that, that's your profitability, which that, all of a sudden, there's your, there's, yeah, there's your money to scale. Um, mm. So that is super, super important to be mm. very, very clear mm. uh, across that because you can do more and you can change lives more if you get get that part right. 100%. Mm. Um, okay, cool. Um, so with that, do you have any uh, – I know you just uh, started to touch on it, but do you have um, any specific financial strategies um, for cash flow um, for providers? Yeah, look, it's, uh, I think it's all about busy, uh, your budgeting. And I know that's really, really boring. And I'm not an accountant we're that all, says... We're all falling asleep. Oh, yeah, I know. So yeah. I'm not an accountant that goes, stop spending money, yeah. right? Or cut this cost. No, but I'm an accountant that looks at that model and says, all right, so if 70% of your, your um, you know, for, let's just say, support worker income comes through and it goes directly to the support worker, which is well-deserved, by the way... It's more about the amount of money that comes from the government more than anything. Mm. Um, so I like to work backwards. So if we've got, you know, obviously 100% coming in the door and 70% goes to the team member, and, and when I when I measure 70%, it's usually on a casual basis, mm-hmm. um, not not full-time or part-time, but it doesn't really matter because, number one, account the for the worst, yeah. but I- even with full-time or part-time people, you have to cover their their wage, their holidays anyway. Yeah. So always, I always calculate on a casual um, rate first. Then then I want profit second, right? Mm-hmm. Profit second. And we know that anything really under 10%, you're not really able to scale a business. Mm-hmm. So profits, between, you know, under 5% is like you're basically on life support. Mm. 5 and 10%, you know, you're breaking even-ish. Mm. Above 10 is good, above 15 to 20, great. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for an NDIS provider, it's like, well, how do we get this, <laughs> this healthy profit margin? So if we go, all right, 70% goes to labour, 10% profit, I'm not going under 10% for that, mm-hmm. then that's 20% that can cover your overheads. Which and is hard because you've got so many unbillable people that, that, that so just audit an office plus then you need your rosterers, um, you know your managers, your marketing. That's right. Your expos, yeah. Like yeah. So you've got to try and keep in that type of model. That's how you would plan the next twelve months. Now then it's based on the number of hours, isn't it? The support hours, like four hundred. Um, hours have you got a calculator how many four 400 hours a day or 200 hours a day that you can bill out now when you yeah let's, ass- let's assume 400 hours at 67 dollars an hour is 26 800 per day but that's where you're doing 400 hours in a day yeah that's right yeah. now that's a lot of money mm. but there's a lot going out so people you know revenue as they say is is vanity yeah Yes. Totally vanity because you've got a hell you, you could make what? Times that by how many days in the year? Three hundred and sixty five days <laughs> in the year. I'm glad you know that. <laughs> yeah, we're we're talking 7. nearly ten million dollars. Mm. Yeah, with seven million gone straight away before you even do a single yeah. thing. <clears throat> and how m- many yeah. unbillable people do you yeah. need in there to Seven million dollars is gone, that's seventy percent. That's right. Straight away. Yeah. So yes, it, and in you know, an NDIS provider can be lucrative. Right, but you've got to be really, really kev- careful at that level. Mm. So work we backwards. all know that growth sucks cash. Growth sucks cash. Make it fit. Make mm. your overheads fit to that 20%. Mm. That's the advice I'm going to give you. Okay. Excellent. I think that's, that's really good. Um, 
Okay, so financial record keeping and stuff. I know this is something that I struggle with because it's just so Get painful. a good accountant. That's your <laughs> advice. Oh, yeah, oh, so Lord, how, do, how do you, you know, do it and stay That's the sane. most unsexy part of this, let, let's face it. Yeah. But it's such a necessary evil because if you don't have that, you've got no eyes into your business. You have no idea what you're doing. You don't know what the in- impact I of every decision. I think that's what Chris is doing is just like, if I don't see it, it doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, you know what my concern is as well? Yeah. Um, like you said before, I don't want an accountant that's going to tell me to stop spending money. <laughs> no. no. Well, Who does? Yeah. I don't even say that to myself, so yeah. why would I tell everybody else? Yeah. Well, I think everyone <laughs> loves to spend money though, right? That's why we always go, oh, maybe we should hire another person. Maybe we should – like, not – not spend money as in going out and buying seven dollar pies at the servo, but just <laughs> yeah. like you know, maybe we can get another staff. You're member. really maybe obsessed with this seven dollar oh, pie. Aren't you? you can tell I've been ripped off a time too many for a pie <laughs> at the servo. Um, yeah, so that that's hard. Hey, and then yeah. the the so we do have to be clear on it. So how do really we really careful? You you've got a lot of like you've got a responsibility to make this business work. It simple. Yeah. Right, because it affects way too many people if you go under. Yeah, it's too it's too damaging. Yeah, um, no pressure, <laughs> <laughs> but the, you know, make it really easy. You want you know, obviously zero as your key. Um, even if you use a different management software, um, like MYP. What do you use, Rachel? Uh, Care Master. Care Master. Yeah. You you want it all integrated. Right, so for the invoicing side, you want your software speaking directly to Proda, making sure that it all reconciles, comes through, and then it get, talks to zero. Mm. Integration is key. Um, you will get to a point in your business where you need internal, someone internal in the business. I don't care what anyone says, right? If you get to probably two to three million dollars in revenue, you need someone on the floor in the business helping you. Doing your yeah. doing your um, your bookkeeping of some sort, mm. even if it's just the invoicing, even if it's you know the reconciling, whatever it is, uh, but you're going to need inside port, uh, support, uh, and then a really great accountant that you're not afraid to pick up the phone and ring. You know they're not charged for every phone call. Mm. Get a really great relationship with your accountant going. They're there for you. Yeah, you're right. basically in bed with your accountant, right? Like they know it's the a very ins and outs intimate relationship. Of, mm. <laughs> yeah, you do. They know the ins and outs of everything. Your, yeah, of your life. Everything. Like, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. So you need to be able to call them and say. So if you're not on a friendly term and mm. you you feel like you can't pick up the phone, get a new accountant. Mm. Get one that you really connect with strongly. It's like, oh no, but oh, they might rouse on me or tell me to cut. Spending. There's other ways to, to work a business. Mm. But I just find make the compliance side as streamlined as possible so it's not a headache. So then it gives you the information you need that you can use to make powerful decisions. Yeah, awesome. Love that. Excellent. Um, do you have any other, any other questions to add? Uh, yes. Look, I'm just going to ask my fun one because, I mean, you've, you've added so much value already and I think <laughs> um, anybody else that wants any more information, they can, they'll be able to find you. Um, we'll make sure of that. Um, but we did say if, <laughs> if accountants for NDIS providers had a theme song, what would it be and why? <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that question. <laughs> I actually asked all my team at the office anyway. So um, we came up with Hopelessly Devoted to You <laughs> by Olivia Newton-John. We have to like insert a clip. <laughs> yeah, that's somewhere. right. Hopelessly yeah. devoted <laughs> to you. Yeah. I know. Well, that's Greece. That's Greece. That makes, no, that makes no sense because that was a different podcast oh, that you were talking oh, about. Like, I'm lost. Is this because of my outfit last week? Or? No, it's my favourite movie, the podcast before. Oh, that was one of the okay. questions. I'm oh, sorry. Right, okay. That was a blunder. Anyway, yeah. continue as you yeah. like. So um, I just think we are totally devoted to our, especially our NDIS business. Well, all of our clients really. I, I don't leave anyone feeling, you know, unloved. Um, but we are there through the thick and thin. We are, I don't know, we just don't leave a sign. Awesome. Unless you really want us to just go, but then that's your problem. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, do you have anything else to add, Suzanne? Any sort of, anything you think is critical for NDIS providers out there to know outside of what you've already 
brain no. dumped on us today. Really. Keep going, you know, keep going, get smarter. Even if the numbers uh, scare you, find a way to work around it. Get someone else to give you the numbers in a conversation or a picture or work around that. Yeah, you know. see, I could do that if you yeah. came and gave me a couple of pictures and went here yeah. and then gave me a number yeah. at the end. And then I go, okay, well, I want to spend this much. How do I do that? Yeah. It's like, it's like with anything in business. Like, why do we have to do it in, like, this really complex manner? Yeah, or you why know? do we have to search for it yeah. or look for it? Or like, Get have a really five-page process. Why can't we just have bullet points or pictures or whatever? Yeah, one of your team members to do it. So, you know, my love of morning huddles, mm-hmm. um, you know, which is a, a – Quick, short meeting to really just um, create a dynamic activity for the day. Um, but you should be having your KPIs, three top KPIs for the business measured every day. But get someone else to tell you. Yeah. You know, have a, have a team member. How many people have we contacted that, are, you know, that with, with expiring funding? Um, you know, what's our revenue target for? You know, ha- how close are we to our revenue target today? Mm. What, what else have we got to invoice? You know, how many um, uh, rejected claims from NDIS have we resolved? Uh, Whatever it is, pick three, your top three that's going to really, really um, get momentum in the business and get someone else to tell you on a daily basis. Put it on a whiteboard Mm -hmm. and it's staring you in the face. Cool. So what were your uh, three takeaways, Rachel, your golden nuggets? All right, here are my golden nuggets. One, know your numbers. This can empower you to make decisions in your business. Um, two, find a hype guy or girl, coach or mentor if you're stuck. You know, because yeah. with that, you can um, completely transform yourself, your business, and the, the service that you provide. Um, find a business that works within the confinements under the NDIS. So things like avoiding o- overtime, look at how you can reduce your overheads, managing your pipeline, funding efficiencies, sorry, finding efficiencies, sustaining sustainable growth. Right? And charge for everything that's motor vehicle, that's, you know, um, other little reports that you're doing, you know, it's the, it's the little stuff that can transform a business. It's mm. not really the big massive things. It's mm. really just the tweaks. It would it would a lot, but like the the last retreat that we did, um, you know, I've been incredibly transparent about it. Like it costs over a hundred grand, and I don't want to factor in because I just don't want to know like the opportunity cost too, where there was <coughs> new clients that we couldn't take on because we didn't have the time as well, um, and that was um, we were okay to wear that because of the um, impact it had. But it's the quickest way to go broke. We need to so that's <laughs> something that. Uh, which means that we can no longer provide that impact. So that's something that we've had to do is is tweak that model so it's sustainable so that we can continue to do that because the outputs were, were insane. Mm. Um, but it was. It was a, a lot of things and labour was obviously the, the biggest thing that we didn't yeah, of course. Um, factor in. So, um, yeah, it's, it's very interesting when you're going and doing things at – astronomical scale rather than doing them like per account it's like i know this account costs me this much and yeah you know makes me this much and it is the small stuff you can change the small stuff easy rather than thinking i've got to make a massive change in the business sometimes you may have to but it's it's the one percent the power of the one percent yeah uh reduce your write-offs so find a strategy to reduce this um, and streamline as much as you can for ease of c- financial compliance. Um, when you are at that level, look at a good bookkeeper and obviously a rock and roll in accountant. <laughs> <laughs> so coach, yeah, yeah. those are my takeaways. I think there's a lot there. Yeah, I think that was incredibly valuable. Thank you for jumping on. Um, hopefully you've had a, a, a good time. It <laughs> wasn't too daunting. Sorry I lied twice. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. Thanks, thanks so, so much. much. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.